right, welcome, 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 welcome to all of you in the house. Welcome to those of you who will be joining us or are already joining us on the live stream. This is Life Church Live, and we are just enjoying ourselves. I've been enjoying myself all day, pretty much all day, most of the afternoon with Apostle Barry Ogden. Uh, great. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Amen. You're going to be blessed tonight. Those of you who are joining us live uh, on Facebook, we just want to welcome you. Those of you that will watch uh, at a later time, thank you. You're going to be very, very blessed. A lot of, just an immense amount of blessing rests upon this man to my left. And a mantle uh, that I've not, a mantle of authority, a mantle of government for God. Um, uh, a man that's, that's been tried and tested and really operates in a, a mantle of authority in government and to influence government in Albania and other areas. But also he's a pastor. Um, and, you know, just a, a great uh, testimony and a great blessing to the body of Christ. So we're going to have some time with Barry here in a moment. We have, and I am so honored to have you, Barry, uh, as our guest tonight. And I've known Barry for many years, and he has served well and served long and very fruitful. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But I want to take, I want to take everybody back uh, to when you got saved. I mean, when you gave your life to Jesus, and then how the Lord brought you into uh, you know, a calling, you were feeling a call to international ministry and, and the nations. And then, you know, th there's some interesting things, just your, 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 uh, the way God confirmed it uh, on that beach and, and the house that you were standing in front. This is so good. You're going to love this. So take us back. And give us kind of the beginning of it all. Well, praise the Lord. And first of all, thank you all for being here and Amen. allowing me to be with Amen. you. It's, I was saying earlier to someone, it's a crazy time right now. And I don't want to live any other time. <laughs> because God created us, anointed us, and empowered us to be the church right now yes. in 2020. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise Woo! the Lord. So I can step back a few years <laughs> to when I was 10 years old, and I grew up in the church. I was uh, dedicated as a baby, and I attended Sunday school regularly and church most of the time. I mean, I don't remember because I was little, but I remember having a Sunday school teacher that made everything really, really interesting, and he gave us challenge to get our name in the Lamb's Book of Life by memorizing things. <laughs> so memorizing scriptures, memorizing the Beatitudes, being able to list the books or recite the books of the Bible in order, uh, other things. And I remember just really wanting to be there and get that. And I got a little pocket knife for being able to do that when I was 10 years old. <laughs> but I was excited and I was learning uh, scriptures and, and things like that. And then we had something that they called Kids Crusade, which was like a, Bible, a vacation Bible school, but it was in the evenings. And it was a Tuesday night of Kids Crusade when I was 10 years old, and they gave an altar call at the end. And I said, I'm ready to do this. And I went forward, Hallelujah. and I gave my heart to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that was an amazing transformation. I didn't go from being a murderer, drug addict, hardened sinner <laughs> to something. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I did. Because whatever the enemy had planned for me was stopped on that day. Mm. Because Jesus entered my life. Now, take it forward a few years. I was a senior in high school, and I had given my heart to Jesus, but I hadn't given him everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we just sang, you deserve the glory, everything is for you, 
But so often when we accept Jesus, we, we accept him and give him just enough for our salvation. <laughs> but we want to be in charge of everything else. Oh, boy. You know what I mean? So it was my senior year of high school. I was two weeks away from prom and a month away from graduation. I was in a very traditional, historical Pentecostal church. Very, you know, high hair and long skirts. Mm. Lots of, whoo, and lots of <laughs> old people speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I had never heard any contemporary Christian music in my life, and my pastor brought in a Christian rock band on a Tuesday night. And what year was this? This would have been 1981. Gotcha. 1981. He was on the cutting edge, by the way. I'm... <laughs> so... About the third song, I was just overwhelmed by the presence of God. It was intense. And the lead singer of the band stopped the music. And I was sitting in the second row about where you are. And he goes, you right there. The Holy Spirit is all over you. Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? And I said, no. Because that's for old people. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I thought that. It's like, no, it's only old people that are baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. It's not us. He's like, the Lord, he, the Lord is ready to baptize you. Do you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? And I said, I gave my heart to Jesus, but there's still things that I have. And I might want to use them at graduation and prom. <laughs> <laughs> and I said... Not right now. Mm. And immediately it was like, huh. and all that that I was feeling just sort of, but I was still hungry for God. But I, 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 if, if there were anything I ever regretted in my life, it was that moment mm. when I said, I told yeah. God to wait. Yeah. But yeah. see, God created, the Bible tells us that he created good works for us to do in our mother's womb. Mm. He creates our life plan and purpose even before we emerge yeah. into this life. Amen, brother. And we can't abort that. Amen. Even when we say not now, even if we say no, God keeps the plan in the event that we repent or Thank in the you, event Father. that we walk in it. Thank you, Father. And so I was called to ministry, I believe, when God created me. Mm. But it took me a while to, to walk into that calling. Mm. And there are people in this room right now that I believe are called to things that you have been dragging your feet on or sidestepping. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's saying, tonight, mm. I'm giving you a word. The Lord, not me, is saying, I'm giving you a word. It's time to walk in to your calling. It's time to walk into your calling. And those so watching, too. Those yeah, watching, watching yeah. Hi, hi, everybody. Yeah, they're... So, yeah. So, yeah. 10 years after that, in 1991, I had been praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for about seven years. And I know that goes against doctrine, so I can't really, you know, because if you pray for the Holy Spirit baptism, you get it immediately. Well, I, prayed, all for, the time. I prayed for seven years. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And I was at a church service... And the pastor told me to come up and pray for someone. And I wasn't seeking the Holy Spirit for myself. But I really wanted this person to be blessed. And I put my hand on them and I began to pray. And suddenly, diverse tongues came out of my mouth. And the power of God just began to flow. And I was like, wow, praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't praise that interesting, God. Barry, that, that you're praying for somebody else? Yeah, it was, it was no longer self-seeking. It was giving, and that spirit and that power just began to flow. And something that I had said, wait, and the Lord had then said, okay, we'll wait. Mm. And then at a time when it was necessary for the ministry of God, it flowed forth. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, by that time, I had... I had accepted that I wanted to go into ministry. I was looking to go to the Soviet Union. It wasn't the former Soviet Union at the time. Yeah, it's the it was real still Soviet. the Soviet Union. <laughs> I wanted to go to Soviet Central Asia. 
and reach unreached people in Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan and some other stands. And <laughs> the Lord uh, just kept working on me and, and doing amazing things. And I'm trying to think of other stories, but uh, God was just doing great things. But I, I knew I was going to do it my way. And I'm still really bad at this, but I don't, I, I still don't have a great comfort level of allowing other people to be part of my ministry by asking them for support. Mm -hmm. if, you know, I, I don't like to ask people to help me do what I do. Yeah, he doesn't ask at all. So I decided what I would do is I would work really hard in my profession and save a lot of money so then I could go be a missionary and I wouldn't have to come to America and ask people to support me. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, I, and I still don't do very well, but the Lord has told me people want to participate with you Amen, and they right. can't go other places and that's how they participate. Yeah. But I'm still really like, it's still a area. Maybe I need deliverance. So Lord, yeah, uh, we'll just bless you, brother. So I was working in television in, in industry, in secular television. Right here in Cincinnati. Yeah, from 84 until Channel five. 95, I was here in Cincinnati. I was working in management at Channel 5. Uh, people asked me uh, about something that I might have done very rewarding, and I point out, well, I was part of the original impetus of the Jerry Springer show. Hmm. <laughs> You're not too proud of that, and, though, are and, you? <laughs> and, that, and that, of course, is why I now live in a third world country. No, uh, no actually, Albania has developed amazingly in the past 20 years. Amen. And I think, God, I think God has forgiven me uh, from working <laughs> yes, yes. in media, yes. which we might actually get into a little bit later. But, uh, but yeah, you had, a, you had a thriving career. That you I was doing, I was on my chosen path. Yeah. My chosen path. Correct. And in 1995, I was invited, well, I was pulled into a move of God that was happening in the 1990s. Uh, God miraculously introduced me to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was happening in several places in the world at that time. There were things going on in South America, there were things going on in um, England. There were things going on in Canada. There were things going on not quite at that time, but coming up in Florida. And the Lord put me into the middle of them. Mm. And so I was sharing with Pastor Randy earlier, I was invited to go work at a revival hotspot, for mm. lack of a better word, in the northeast of England. It was the place where in, or in, 2000, sorry, in 1904... Smith Wigglesworth went. Listen to this. This is so good. Smith How many know who Smith Wigglesworth? I mean, Smith Wigglesworth was an apostle of the faith that operated in great signs and wonders. You can read about him in the early night in the early 20th century. Yeah, he until he died in 1948. He was he's known as the apostle of faith. I mean, he was a man who prayed and miracles happened. Yeah. So he was a he was in ministry in a city called Bradford, England. And there was a revival going on. There was the Welsh revival happening in Wales. And there was a Sunderland outpouring happening in northeast England. Interestingly, they were both in coal mining, working class areas of the UK. And he went up to the revival meetings. And he was there for two or three days. And he thought they were nice meetings, but he really didn't receive anything from God. And then he decided it's time to get back home. Mm. So he went to the pastor's house, which was across the coast road from the sea. And he knocked on the door. And the pastor's wife came to the door. And he said, I'd like to see Pastor Body. And he said, I'm sorry, he's not here. And he says, well, I came and I just wanted to bless him and say thank you. And she said, well, I will pass that along, this but might so I good. pray for you? This is so Some of good. you read the book. She prayed for him, and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit in the threshold of that house. Smith Wigglesworth, right there. But the story gets even better here. So I was invited to go work in that town mm. in a move of God that was happening. Part of it would have been helping with the television that was going out from that city because of the revival and some other things. 
But I had a career that was financing me rather well. And so I was making the decision, and the pastor and his wife told me, why don't you go over in front of the, or on the beach in front of the seashore in front of the house. It's, it's England. There's really no beaches in England. There's sand along the shore, but it only gets up to about 50 degrees ever, so mm-hmm. it's, it's cold. But they said, why don't you go in front of the house where Smith Wigglesworth got the baptism and pray? And so I went there, and I prayed, and I was like, Lord, do I give up the career that has been my dream since I was old enough to have dreams and come here by faith? Or do I continue working and, and take a lot, of hol- or a lot of vacations and go on mission trips? And as I'm praying, I'm watching the sea come in. I'm like, why is this so hard, God? Mm-hmm. Jesus, you appeared on the water to Peter, and you just told him what to do. Why don't you just appear on those waves I'm watching? <laughs> and the Lord said, no, I won't appear on the waves. But I guarantee you this. If you step out, I'll never let you sink. Come on. Come on. Give God praise right there. That's a word. Two months later, on August 12th, 1998, I moved to England. Mm. And I've been living by faith on that word ever since. Mm. When I moved to England, I had some experiences that just still surprise me the people that i got to sit around i was telling oh, this brother, is so good. i was telling brother randy before that a lot of my education although i've been to university i've been to grad school i've done a lot of a lot of formal education but i've sat in settings like this with people who are well known today and listened to them talk about what god has been doing in their ministries and in their lives and it just while it, you were there in Sunderland, yeah, the, and, because and here, re- but there in Sunderland especially, because revival was happening in Sub- yeah, Sunderland there. and Brownsville and Toronto. These were the three hotbeds happening in 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 America and England. And so we had people coming in constantly with big names, and then I would sit there. I might be producing a TV program about share them. share those names. They got to hear this. This well, is impartation. I, I just, it, there, there are people that you may or may not know, but I was working with uh, Ken Gott and Lois Gott, but we had Cindy Jacobs, we had James Gall, we had Wesley and Stacy Campbell, we had a guy called Noel Alexander, which I felt was really amazing. I had three days with Ed Silvoso, uh, Tommy Tenney, uh, just a number of people. Because you were um, doing productions. Randy Clark. Randy Clark. You were doing I, productions. You were. I, I once played billiard at 3 a.m. after a serve billiards at 3 a.m. with Randy Clark in a <laughs> castle. Uh, but but to sit and hear them talk. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, John Bevere. I, I remember having a conversation with John Bevere in the green room of a conference, uh, just to to get that impartation mm. and to learn. Uh, Mike Bickle and Lou Engle imparted prayer to me. They don't remember me, but I remember them. It's so uh, important, isn't it, Barry, to be around people that carry anointing? Absolutely. Uh, and it's important, especially in this day and age. You know, the enemy wants to separate us. He wants us to see things on the Internet. Mm. But it's important that we come together. Yeah. Now, we, we, we need to be smart. We need to be humble. But the ecclesia has to gather for a number of reasons. One is so that we can learn and we can can experience the anointing in the place. But the other is that we are the ecclesia. We are the legislative assembly of God as we come together. And when we come together, there's an exponential outpouring of authority and power that changes the atmosphere around us. Mm. That doesn't happen. Did you guys get that? Come on, give the Lord praise. That is a... That's such a teaching right there that you just don't get. You get that here, but that just affirms what we already know. It doesn't happen with the mere authority of the believer, 
but it happens when the believers come together yes. in the authority of the ecclesia. Yes. Transformative authority pierces the darkness over regions and nations. Mm. So mm. it's important to come together. And I just had a blessed time with him uh, and, and learning and, 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 and reaping truth from all of these people. Hallelujah. And then the Lord sent me to Albania. <laughs> a, a land, Tell us about that. A land that in 1967 declared there is no God. Mm. And the I, only nation that's The ever. only nation that's ever declared itself constitutionally atheist. And it was the last communist country to fall in Europe. Mm. And that was in 1992, and I moved there in 1999. So seven years. After the first cycle of seven, God brought in a, a wave of people, and I was one of them. And God's doing great things there. Um, I don't know. Let's yeah. ask, yeah. me, ask me another oh, question. Oh, no, no, no. You're right, You're right on target because as, as God sent you to Albania, um, you, you, you uh, partnered with... Uh, I partnered with a local Albanian yeah. to plant churches and start a training school. And I'll, I'll also mention to, to you that I, I spoke with Brother Randy... In these impartations, both in England and beyond, I mean, you, you get such a boldness when you're around people of faith, yes. when you're out around people with experiences and testimonies, you're no longer intimidated by the possibility of failure mm. because you realize it is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God that these things happen. So you're not afraid to pray for people. You're not, allowed to pro you're not afraid to proclaim things. You no longer walk in a spirit of intimidation, but you do walk in that spirit of power and love and self-control. Yes. And so you pray for people with belief and not just hope. You pray for people with a confidence that the Lord, you know what the Lord wants done, and you pray, and you see healing, you see deliverance, you see salvation, mm. because you have been around people of faith, and those people of faith have built your faith. So God was, God was training you, Barry, before you actually went to Albania. He was training you with the, you went to England f four years in a row. And then God sent you there. And you were operating already in signs and wonders uh, in those meetings when, when he was sending you just as a part-time missionary and getting you warmed up for Albania. So you're operating in signs, wonders, miracles, healings, baptisms of the Holy Spirit, preaching the gospel. Tell us more just about, about how God just grew some of the giftings and mantle of, of apostle upon your life. Yeah, absolutely. And what I'll do is I'll step back to that time when I thought I was going to Uzbekistan in the, in the late 80s. Mm. And the Lord spoke to me because I was in a local church and I wanted to be a missionary. <laughs> but I really wasn't doing anything where I was. Mm -hmm. I was getting ready to go into ministry abroad. Mm. And the Lord said, there's ministry to be done where you are. That's right. And it's like that he who is faithful in the small things yeah. can be faithful in the larger ones. Yes. You know, it's like here are opportunities that you're ignoring because you want to minister abroad. Mm. But your church needs ministry today. Mm. And there are people here as well that you feel called to ministry. But you don't feel called to the ministry that's available at Life Church. Mm. And so you're just saying, well, that's not what I'm called to. Mm. Mm. Now, I want to talk about fivefold ministry in a minute, but just because you're not called to it doesn't mean you can't do it. Amen. Amen. Did you hear that say that again? Just because you're not called to it doesn't mean you can't do it. Amen. Amen. Good. Just because it's not your gifting mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't do it. Mm. If it's your gifting, it comes easy. Mm -hmm. If it's not your gifting, you've got to work at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
For instance, that, that's if, not my gift. If, 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 if you're not called to be an evangelist, you can still soul win. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you're an evangelist, you basically walk into a room and people fall on their face and say, I repent. <laughs> but if you're not an evangelist, you've got to work at it. Mm. But you still bring people to Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen, brother. Amen. That's good. So, yeah, I had to start by saying, okay, I'll teach Sunday school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I learned things, and I developed skills, not gifts, but skills for teaching. Yeah. And then, how about we run a a young adults ministry? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I've learned administrative skills in the ministry. I had them in business, but business and ministry are different, although not so much now as they used to be. Because the, the, the church seems to be taking on the pattern of this world. Mm. But I learned things <laughs> that would make story. me able to plant churches and run Bible schools mm. that came in handy later in life. Mm. And so that whole development, not only with the spiritual of sitting literally at the feet of men and women of God who'd been there and done that, but also cleaning the toilets and yeah. teaching the classes and, and, and those kind of and things. And tell, tell us about... So when you, when you started doing ministry, uh, you noticed in, I mean, in your local church, in your home church, real quickly, you noticed that in your notebook, you know, there's how many, how many weeks in a, in a year, right? And, and how many services you attended. You, the, the church doors were open three times a week, and you found one year or in a period of whatever, you had only been to church like 24 times. So again, I didn't want to be the missionary that had to rely on other people. And I didn't see that that was... There, there's a blessing in relying on other people. But I didn't recognize that, so I was like, I'm going to raise all of... or I'm going to earn all of my money. And so I was in television, and I did graphics for sports. Now, that wasn't my main job. My main job was working for the broadcasting company. But living here in Cincinnati, there were great opportunities to work outside of my regular job. And so I did graphics for baseball games. And I could do a lot of baseball games at Riverfront when the Reds were playing. And some of you don't even know that that was a stadium back then. (laughs) But anyway, everything changes. Mm -hmm. There's a football team in Las Vegas. I still can't get my head around that. (laughs) But... uh, So I would work baseball, and then I started working tennis, and I even worked billiards and bowling and um, volleyball. But I wouldn't work football because it was on Sunday, and I needed to be in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Amen. And about 1994, I was like, "Ah, I can do a football game here and there. There's only eight of them. Mm. That might have been 893. But so I worked some football games. And then the next year, I worked more football games. Mm -hmm. But what I realized, I I went to church and I took notes every time. Nobody's taking notes tonight, but that's okay. (laughs) But somewhere in the winter of 1995, the Lord spoke to me and says, where are you? Mm -hmm. And I'll share a little story, and I'll try to be brief. But I liken it to a kid at Christmas at the mall where you're with mom and dad and you see something shiny and you want to stop and they want to keep going Mm. and they'll let you stop for a minute and they'll walk a little bit and you're still there and they're still looking back making sure you're okay but you're looking up at the 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 shiny distraction and then suddenly you're like where'd they go Mm. because they were moving and you were stopped Mm. now you weren't lost they had their eyes on you And you screamed out, and they were right there to grab you by the hand. Mm -hmm. But when we stop to look at the distraction, God keeps moving. Mm -hmm. God keeps moving. And I began to be distracted by making money to be a missionary. (laughs) And God kept moving, and I was stopped. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at my notes, in 1994, I went to church 24 times. Now, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night should have been 156 times. Mm -hmm. 
And the Lord said, where are you? Mm. Just like he said to Adam and Eve. He knew exactly where I was. I was looking at something shiny mm. instead of following him. Amen. And so I began to run after him, and I went to every church service starting in January of 95. And you started attending Cletty Keith's Friday night. Well, and, and Cletty Keith came into our church on a Wednesday and described what he was doing. And I was like, I got to go there too. So then I started going to church on Friday night. Yeah. And I saw signs and miracles and wonders. And I saw things that made me And that me revival real. is still going on in That revival church. is still yeah, going on. Yeah, I mean, right every Friday night in Florence, Kentucky, but what heritage I, is moving. What I saw was... I no longer had a God who is able. Mm. I had a God who does. Mm. He went from, it, it went from being possible that God does things to an affirmation that it's not just possible, but he is actively doing things. It's like we no longer have to ask, what would Jesus do? Because Jesus is here. It's what is Jesus doing? Yes. He's with us. Yes. And so I, I tra my mindset was transformed, which is the definition of repentance. Mm. And then the Lord took me to those places and taught me those things yeah. and, and took me to Albania where I put much of it in practice. And my main goal was to raise up men and women of prayer. I planted churches with the Albanian friend. I ran a Bible school with my Albanian friend. And then I was asked to pastor another church in town. And I've been doing that now for And this is in the capital city of Albania. In the capital city of Albania. But I've seen, we've been out on the streets, and I've seen people who were obviously oppressed by demons, set free immediately, just a clarity come over them. Hallelujah. I remember talking to a boy. It was, it was cold. It was wintertime. He had no shoes. He had a big wound in the back of his head, and it was bleeding. And I, he said it had been there for like a week. We prayed. The next day, we're out again. He comes running up. We, we prayed, and we saw that clarity come on him. And then he showed us his head. We prayed. Nothing happened right then. Next day, he came and showed us. It was healed, and it had become a scar in 24 hours. <laughs> come on. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I had a boy that was with me, and he went up to this older gentleman, and he was talking to him on the street. And the older gentleman comes like, what? I can't hear you. And he's yelling in his ear, and he just couldn't hear. And so Kutim is yelling at him, and then suddenly he began to cry. I mean, he didn't even, I mean, he was just telling, Jesus loves you! Mm. And suddenly he began to cry, began to cry, and he's like, what, what is it? And he's like, I can hear you clearly. Hallelujah. Didn't lay hands on him at all. Just didn't, Jesus. Even, didn't even pray for hearing. He just told him about Jesus. Come on. And Jesus healed. I want somebody to shout in here. Hey! Those things, those experiences will make you bold. Those experiences will stop you from putting faith in yourself, which intimidates you, mm. and have you put faith in God, which makes you bold. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, it does. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm excited about what you're doing here with the School of the Prophets. I'm excited that you're looking to raise up men and women who don't walk in their own power and their own, their own reputation, but they understand who God is and who God has created them to be, and by the grace of God and the goodness of God and the power of God, they transform nations. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Now, one of the lessons I learned from those 24 days of church in a year was if you miss church, you stop missing church. Say it again. I, this is just, come on. I didn't know because it stopped being important to me. If you miss church, you stop missing church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because other things become more important. Mm -hmm. I believe God is doing some things right now, and I believe that 
Some of, I, I don't believe COVID came from God as a design, but I believe God is doing something, is shifting and shaking mm -hmm. and, and reformatting. Mm -hmm. And he's calling the people of God to move forward forcefully. Yeah. And like I said, what a great time to be alive because we are the body of Christ and he is allowing us oh. to be part of a major shift in everything. But we don't do it from the sidelines. We do it from the front. Yes. And we don't do it because of who we are. We do it because who he says we are. Come on. But if you miss church, you stop or you start miss or you stop missing church. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be together. Yes. It's wonderful to watch online mm -hmm. and bless all of you who are watching online. Mm -hmm. But God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'm going to get in trouble. Go, go. God Come hasn't on. given you a spirit of fear. Come on. He's given you a spirit of power that needs to be together with other people of power. Mm. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Now, now, take your time. Mm -hmm. Watch online. Mm. But at the slightest inclination of spirit, come together. Amen. Come together. Amen. Because there's a world that is waiting for the sons and daughters of God to be revealed. Oh. And that's who we are. That's who we are. And the world right now is completely confused. Yeah. They're afraid. They're angry. They're frustrated. A spirit of division and hatred mm -hmm. and rage is rising up. Mm -hmm. But God has given us a spirit of love yeah. and ah. self-control. Oh, yeah. And power. To overcome anything that the enemy would try to do Thank you, Father. to kill, steal, and destroy. Thank you, and to bring Father. fear. He is the God of peace. A peace beyond human understanding. How can you be at peace when everything is collapsing around you? Because my feet are on the rock. <laughs> Sorry. Amen, bro. No, don't apologize, bro. I'm, I'm like... Did I answer your question? Get out there. Yeah. So... This is so good, Barry. You are just doing just amazing. We got time. So you, you are in Albania, and, and God opens this door of the International Church uh, in, in Tirana, right, in, in the capital city of Albania, and you begin to pastor this church, mm -hmm. and you begin to raise up intercessors mm -hmm. that are piercing the darkness and pushing away the darkness in Albania. But tell me just briefly about the historic persecution of Christians when communism came in. And then take us to where it is now after you, Albania is now, and what's happening in the governmental mountain of Albania and Christians that are, or people that are embracing Christianity at top levels of government because of some of the, a lot of, a lot of things that you have done and you have you've pierced the darkness with intercession. So let me tell you a bit of Albanian history. The Bible in Romans, Paul tells us that he preached the gospel as far as Illyricum, which is northern Albania. It was, it, the Romans were obviously controlling the whole world in the first century, including Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, they had Herod in charge there. They had people in charge of what they called Illyricum, which is now Montenegro, Croatia, and, and northern Albania. They had the province of Macedonia, which actually came through all the way to the coast of southern Albania. But Paul said he preached the gospel as far as Illyricum. Yeah. The gospel was preached to Albanians in the first century. Mm. Wow. And Albanians grabbed hold of the gospel and made it their, you know, they gave, they put their faith in Jesus. Amen. To the point that three or four or five hundred years later, the church was still being run by Rome, and there were at least three popes who were Albanian. So Albanians were leaders of the church in the first millennium. They were a strong, vibrant group of Christians. But by the 1400s, when the Ottoman Empire overran, overran Albania, they denied their faith 
because of convenience. Mm. They denied their faith because it was inconvenient to maintain Christianity. Now, let me say, they were truly persecuted. It wasn't just wearing masks. Mm. It wasn't just having to walk on arrows. You know, somebody, I was, at a, I was at a church, and they said, only sit in the row with the green arrow. And I was like, I don't, I don't see the green arrow. I see Batman. <laughs> and no, so I see the green arrow is a, yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah, anyway, they weren't inconvenienced by a few rules. They were being persecuted. They were being killed. They were being tortured. They were being imprisoned. Mm. And they gave up their faith. Mm. And they adopted Islam. Mm. Until the point that 70% of Albanians were Muslim. Mm. In a country that had a rich and strong Christian heritage. Wow. And for 400 years, the Ottomans ruled the land where Paul had preached the gospel and a vibrant church had existed, but it had been intimidated into converting to another religion. And I used to ask, how could a country say there is no God? Well, if... And let me just say, America has a lot of false gods. Mm -hmm. There's one true God. That's right. Jesus Christ. But we worship education. Mm -hmm. We worship entertainers. Mm -hmm. We worship sports figures. We worship trash on television and other things. We worship politicians. There are, we have a lot of other gods before the one true God. Yeah. How do we lose sight of God and turn our back on him? Well, when our real God is impotent, mm. it's easy to believe there is no God. Mm -hmm. 400 years, Albanians worshipped something other than the one true God. And so when the government came and said, God is not real, they said, well, we haven't seen any evidence of it. In and this is the years. communist. Yeah, the communists come China. and say, there is no God. And the majority of Albanians say, well, for 400 years, we've really seen no evidence. We've been doing the religious practice, but we've seen no evidence of God. So it's probably true. There is no God. Mm. And so they easily walked away from their faith. I see America on that same course that at some point, now let me tell you, there's a situation in America that will lead to persecution, mm -hmm. but the church is not being persecuted in America. Even the ones that are being threatened with lawsuits by the government, that's intimidation, but it's not persecution. That's a good word. And if you can't deal with intimidation you are quickly going to melt when persecution comes. Whoa. Do you understand that? Oh, I understand it. Yeah. If you can't deal with intimidation, you're never going to stand during persecution. Mm -hmm. And the church in America and the rest of the world needs to stand up mm. and quit whining. Stop drinking milk Amen. and eat the word. Amen. Sheree, I want you to come if you would. Uh, we're, I tell you, Barry, you, you've just got to come back. I know you're in town, and, and we want to just remember Barry's mom. His mom is so precious. She's, she's almost, did I just turn something off here? Hello, hello. There I hey, am. Hey, you're back. There I am. I'm back. Uh, pray for her um, and uh, pray for Barry's mom and uh, that she will just, you know, recover. And uh, we just, we want her to recover. We love her. But Barry, real quickly, what God is doing in Albania is unprecedented. I've never heard. And you don't have to, I know it's not easy. You can't like mention names and who you're, right. who, you know, these are high level officials that that he's like a Daniel to. I mean, he's like Daniel the prophet to leaders of nations and, and leaders in cities, and, and they listen. 
and you're a friend to them. So, so first of all, I grew up in eastern Claremont County. This area, even though it was mostly farmland 30 years ago, was still like the really advanced, you know, we were hillbillies, and you guys were like, you know, this is, it, yeah, that's Warren County, that's, you were highfalutin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. Come on. And so I'm in Albania, and I get calls from government leaders to come and pray for them. And I'm like, I'm just this little kid from a little town, you know, with less than 2,000 people. Why am I praying with world leaders? I was supposed to lead, be part of a leadership team at the European Parliament in Strasbourg at the end of March. Now, COVID closed down the parliament, so we didn't do that. But I get calls to pray for government leaders you, in several countries. And I'm like, who am I? Mm. Well, you know who I am? Mm -hmm. I'm one called by God. Yes. Amen. And I'm yes. not there to represent yes. me. That's right. But God does amazing things. And I, I, I used to share this many years ago when revival was going on down in, when I was still in Kentucky. And it was like, God always amazes me. But he's God. I should expect these things, so I shouldn't be amazed. Mm. But then, of course, when Paul prayed for us in Ephesians, he said, God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than anything you can ask or imagine. I ask you tonight, what can you imagine? Mm. Imagine something more, because God can do more than you can imagine. What can you ask for? Ask for more, because God can do more than what you can ask for. So when you imagine something greater than you're imagining right now, begin to imagine even greater things. <laughs> and when you imagine those greater things, begin to imagine even greater okay. things. Yeah, Brother Randy, imagine a revival that spreads out of Ohio and covers the Midwest. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, now Lord. imagine something greater. Mm. Ho! Oh. Imagine. And then imagine more. Ask. And then ask more. Not out of pride and yeah. selfishness, but out of humility. Thank you, Lord. And love for the people of yeah. God and the call of God. Yes, God. I'm still amazed. And, and so I was, I was sharing, I was like, I don't know what God's trying to do. He's introducing me to all of these people. Mm. And a, they're asking me to pray for them. Mm. They're not believers. No, they're not Christians. Not yet. I was, I was helping out a school, a high school. And I got called into the owner. It's a private school. The owner called in and said, I need to talk to you. I go in. I need you to pray for me in the school and this and that. And I was like, I didn't even know you were a believer. Oh, I'm not, but I've seen you and I know your God does things. I'm getting goose. That is like, whoa. People see you and they know your God does things. Ask and imagine greater things. Even more even more so yeah god's opening doors and i don't know why i ask why are you open doors but he taught me a long time ago when god opens a door he told me i'm not going to sink if i walk so if he opens the door i'm going to follow him greater because i don't want to get stuck in the in the department store looking at shiny things anymore amen you know god's moving and I don't want to have to get a, a, a notice in the mail saying God moved. I want to go with him when he moves. Yes. Amen. So these, we're going we're gonna to stand here in a moment. We're going to give an altar call. There's such an anointing on that. Greater things. Remember that. Think about that. Think about what God is saying to you and then go greater. And then go even greater. Let him, let him paint 
upon the canvas of your life and of your heart. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late ever to do what God tells you to do. But let me tell you, Barry, what I feel, the, the, the mantle upon you. There is warfare over that region of our world. And it is, it is Islam and Christianity right there that's on that crossing point. And you are there as a firewall for God, as an apostolic leader. And this is what apostles do. They remove principalities and powers because they have the authority and they bring together the ecclesia, the church of the living God. And when the fivefold leaders are together, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, when they operate in unity, the body, the ecclesia operates at its full potential to break and to, and to destroy and remove principalities that are territorial spirits manipulating people and causing confusion, chaos, murder, and strife, and the invasion of false doctrines and religions. And it poisons people and takes them to hell. And God doesn't want the people there to go to hell. Amen. They need to hear the gospel. Amen. Will you stretch out your hands toward Barry right now? Shurabaka. And then we're going to turn our hearts to you right now. God is turning his heart to you as you're praying for Barry. He's calling you as you're praying for him. He's opening doors for you. He is moving in your life. Greater, greater. Father, we thank you for the firewall. We thank you for the firewall. We thank you for the firewall. We thank you for the firewall, God. That you're man, you're apostle. That you raise up, yes, from a city of 2,000 people in Ohio. And set, not in his own strength, but in your power. I see the mantle upon you, and as you look to Jesus and the emerald glory around the throne, the light and the glory as it shifts and shimmers, that same glory reflects upon the mantle of God upon you, Barry. Principalities and powers recognize the mantle of Jesus and the glory of Jesus upon you. And they must remove as you teach the people intercession and as they begin to bring intercession and as they unite in intercession and worship to God, you're piercing the darkness and removing principalities. And we call upon you, O oh God, to bring a declaration to the precious nation of Albania where they renounce, where they renounce, they renounce their atheism and they declare that you are God. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Bring revival like they've never experienced before. And let the voice of God be heard in this man and the authority. The authority of God. Give us souls, Lord. Give him souls for his labor. Give him souls for his labor. Shuriaba parroso te bediki si parroso tararaba. Jorende bedisi torroso tararaba. And there is a scepter in your hand. Not only a sword, but a scepter of authority. when you lift your hand and declare those things that be not as though they were the angels of God will assist you and the spirit of God will rest upon you and move and break because he is the anointing of God And I see churches planted. And Lord, let these men and these women in high places of government, God, may they give their love to you and their devotion to you. In 
Jesus' name. I want you to stand. Everyone stand. Those of you at home, I want you to stand. Barry, I'm going to turn it over to you. I feel like maybe there's something in your heart that you want to call. I think, I think the, the greater, the greater, the greater, the greater, the greater, the greater, that you, whatever you're thinking, God can use you in wherever you start, wherever it is you are. I mean, there may be things that you're lacking so much of and you can just say, God, I'm believing you for a home or I'm believing you for an apartment. I'm believing you for a job. But God just doesn't have a job for you. He's got a career for you. He's got a calling for you. He's got influence for you. So wherever you are, I want Barry, I want to release you right now, Barry. Just operate. I want you to... 